everybody and welcome. I am so excited to talk about this movie. I had the pleasure of going to the theater to see it. Uh, it was a packed house and it was just a transformative experience. And it was a few days ago, so I'm happy to be here so I can dig in. I'm such a film buff and I'm such a fan of Anjanus and Ava's. So I'm excited to have this conversation and I hope you guys are as well. Um, but thank you. Thank you, Ava. Thank you, Anjanu, for making the time. I know it has been a whirlwind press tour for you ladies. So thank you for that. Thank you to Delta Sigma Theta for organizing this and hosting this because it really is important that we talk about this film. And thank you all in the audience for joining us for this conversation because our hope is that with this conversation, it will encourage you. If you've seen the movie, go see it again. Tell your friends, take more people because we not only need to see it, we need to have conversations about it. So let's dig into it. Ava and Anjanu, hey ladies, how you doing? Hey Hello. Sis, how are you? Hello. I know this press tour because every time I look online and I was doing a deep dive of research to prepare for this, you guys must be exhausted. Tell the truth. <laughs> yeah you know it's it's uh, exhilarating though to be able to share the work yes uh, yeah it's you know you got to put in the put in the miles so that people can um you know 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 what we're trying to share but I, I love that and I wonder um for you guys do you get have you had a chance to watch this and I, I not just this I guess with all of your work do you have a chance to detach as creatives right and really sit back and take it in like we do at all or it, when you, every time you watch it it's just you're too close to it i'm still too close to it yeah I'm still too close to it i i feel i feel like i'm still doing it you know it 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 was it was less than a year ago you know so yeah. i still feel like it's in the womb for me yeah 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 i heard you say um Anjanu, in another interview that you that you're still in character well, <laughs> a little bit. I mean, I still, I still like, uh, I, I still feel, I still feel I am fighting for Ms. Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting for the character of Isabel. I'm fighting for the film. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What about you, Ava? How many times have you seen this film? Not working on it, but just sitting back and just watching it. Yeah, well, I have a process during the editing where I, we watch it down every Friday. Right. So as we're building it and as I'm shaping scenes, um, you know, I'm assessing it every once a week as a as a viewer. So not at the editing bay. Okay. We have a small screening room on my campus here in Los Angeles, and we watch it in the seats, and we see how the music feels, and we see how the scene feels, and it changes every week. And that process is a real um, a newer part of my filmmaking process, but helpful. And then once you get into watching it in the festival environment and then in Q and A's and in theaters, I've seen it about maybe 20 times over, over the last six months since I've made it. And you know what, it changes based on the audience that you're watching with. If I'm watching it with a bunch of Italians at the Venice Film Festival, that's different than when I watched it, you know, uh, two weeks ago in DC. So, um, you know, it changes based on who you're around. And that's the beautiful thing about cinema. Yeah, I'm fascinated. And I hope not to spoil. I'm going to try not to spoil too many things from the film. But there were just so many moments that just took my breath away, had me in tears. You know, I was trying in that crowded theater not to cry out loud. But then moment, I mean, moments where I laughed, you know, and was rooting for um, Isabel like she was Indiana Jones you know, on a quest. It was just such an, an experience to watch this in the theater. But Ava, let me ask you this, because I feel like, I know you have this masterclass, but I feel like there needs to be almost like a book or a film about the making of this. I mean, 37 days, three countries, no big studio help. In addition to Ingenue, great star power, the planes, trains, and automobiles to getting the film processed uh, and Voice is telling you off the top uh, that this book is not the one that could be adapted to a film. I would say that that is audacious, but I hear 
that you don't like to consider this particular process audacious? How would you describe that? Considering all, all of that. Blessed. <laughs> blessed for sure blessed in in feeling a calling to do it blessed in having the experience over the last 12 years of making films to know how to do it blessed to have people around me um my producing partner paul garns um you know by my side every day trying to figure out how to take these ideas off the page um to be able to have a once in a lifetime talent like Anjanu Ellis Taylor, who's the perfect artist to play this very singular part uh, at the right time. She's the right age. She's got the right chops. She she wants to work with me. You know what I mean? Like all the things come together. Yeah. And, you know, those are blessings that you can't take for granted. So that would be my word. I just yeah. want to say one thing. I saw someone yeah, in the Q&A say they couldn't hear me. And I don't know how to check that. Can people? It says need more volume. People are having a problem, I think. Okay. With so let's work on that. Yeah. Um, I'll ask. Can I increase my volume? But I don't know how to do that. On your computer? Well, I'm up. I'm up all the way. Okay. So, yeah. Can you guys let us know in the chat just now with Ava speaking and fixing that volume if you can hear her now? I'm seeing some thumbs up. I'm hoping that that's that's fixed. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Okay. So people are saying that they can hear me, but I'm not as loud as you. Some oh. people are saying it's perfect. We're just going to roll with it. That just might be me because I'm loud. <laughs> <laughs> that might just be me. Um, I hope they hear Anjanu, uh, you know, very well. Um, also, Anjanu, let me ask you a question. And hopefully whatever's going on with Ava's audio, we can get that fixed if it's still a problem. But Anjanu, um, Ava just, you know, broke down a lot of the reasons why you are the perfect actress for this role. When this came to you, what made you say yes? I mean, was there any hesitation? Like, how did you find out that this was open? Did Ava call you up? How did this come to be? Well, I had I had heard rumors that uh, Ava was going to adapt the book. And, you know, I just saw it when I heard that, that, you know, that sounds incredible. And gosh, I, I wish my life you know, would allow such a thing to happen to me. I could be a part of something that I just felt was just so incredibly prestigious. You know, her, Ms. Wilkerson, uh, the book. Um, and then um, then I, I heard that she was actively casting and I just wanted to be someone that she thought about, you know? Uh, and um, so I, me and my sister uh, did some little magic and we put together a picture of me that I thought we thought looked like Miss Wil Wilkerson. And we sent it to Aisha Coley, the amazing black woman casting director. And Miss Coley sent it to Ava. And then Ava called me and we started, we started talking. Wow. That's incredible. I feel like every time I watch the two of you together, I feel like this was just meant to be, you know. Ava was the writer and director to bring this to life, but Anjanu was the actress to bring this role to life. But I feel like there's this chemistry to between you two now because of how you had to work together to bring this. How has this experience bonded the two of you as women, just as humans? I mean, I don't know if you're finishing each other's sentences, <laughs> but you did, but there's, I mean, you've done a lot of, you. I hear that you all work, you know, Ava, I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you said something to the effect of Anjanu almost being like a great partner, you know, beyond being the lead actor here, you know, she really was involved um, with this project. Yeah, yeah, she absolutely, um, you know, very, very brilliant sister, you know, um, you know, someone who I could really bounce ideas off of, who really yeah. pushed me to um, explore the material further than just the script that I gave her. Uh, not in a demanding way, but in a intellectually rigorous, let's make the best thing we can kind of way. And, it, and I, I thought in a spirit of partnership. So I received it, um, you know, as a kind of someone who cares about the material as much as I do. And 
Um, and yeah, she's a, a very, um, she has a very specific way of working that I try to uh, match or, or change my way of working to, you know, create a set of conditions where she could feel free. Um, she could feel valued, seen, first on the call sheet, our leading lady, all of the things that I wanted her to feel. And, um, you know, I think the crew really rallied around that. You know, just people wanted to make sure she had everything she needed because she had, you know, a very tough task on her shoulders every day. So um, it was uh, a beautiful thing to witness her uh, give birth to the performance. Yeah. And Anjanu, to prepare for this, I, I read somewhere that you never, you know, you read a lot of uh, Isabel's work, you study her, but you never spoke to her or met her. Is that true? Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't meet her. Um, when I was cast in the in the film, um, Ava and Miss Wilkerson had sort of, you know, established this kind of working practice, um, and um, they were Ava respected her space. And when I became a part of it, I just, you know, I tried to continue that practice. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. When I watched it after seeing the movie and then just doing a little bit more study for this and watching interviews with Miss Wilkerson, you just really captured her. And I know that, you know, Ava has said and many people said that you really poured yourself and that you brought yourself to this role. But you and this actual person, right, the character that you play um, and you, Anjanu, are very different. Um, How do you know that? Because you said it, and I heard you say it. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> because you said that there were moments, um, you know, that we see portrayed in this film with Isabel, like in Germany, um, when she's mm -hmm. at that table, mm -hmm. with the, you know, with the people where, mm -hmm. I mean, it took Niecy Nash's character to speak for me in that film because I was like, you mm -hmm. know, and I feel like Ingenue would have said something in that moment but Isabel mm -hmm. wouldn't and didn't. And you portrayed that so beautifully. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 it was usually when I am gifted with someone's life to be, I, you know, I said to someone, I'm, a, I'm essentially a biographer on screen, right? And so you, you, you edit, you add, you, you know, you, 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 um, you're, you're writing a life through your work on screen. So um, I, in the editing process of that, you, 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 you know, you wanna make it as personal as possible and to put yourself into it as much as you can. But there were, there were things that I couldn't put in it, you yeah. know? I, and I think, I guess the, I guess the comp, the comparison is, of that is Ms. Wilkerson is she, when the, her, her mode of writing is very personal. It's very transparent. It's very intimate. And that's what makes her a brilliant, accessible writer, not just brilliant, but an, but an accessible writer. So the way that I'm approaching this is what I mean by that in being intimate is that she brings as much of her as she can into her, into her work. Every argument that she makes for cast she says something about her life to, mm -hmm. to illustrate that argument, right? So that's how I looked at it. Okay, what can I, what part of me can I bring to this? And this, for example, that scene, the, the, the scene in Germany, what I would bring to it is my rage. Right. My rage. I had rage. I had personal rage. What I was saying that that hospital in Hattiesburg, Mississippi is named after Nathan Bedford Forrest, a grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. My mother went to that hospital to get care. The fam my family lives in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. It's in Forrest County. It's also named after Nathan Bedford Forrest. Ava was so generous with me. She allowed me to say that to say that line. I didn't ask for, you know, specific lines really, but that was one that I asked for. And I'm mad about that. I'm mm. still angry about that. I'm, I carry that rage with me every day. How I express rage and having never met Ms. Wilkerson, I can just imagine <laughs> that she would not express the rage in the way that I do. So that was the kind of work that I had to do. I had to edit that, you know, um, 
in a way that I felt would honor her properly. Yeah. I, I mean, your performance, if I may say, it, it was just beautiful. I mean, even in portraying the grief, you know, I think that there is um, a, a, a fatigue that comes with, with deep grief. And I think you just embody that with, you know, having to move through different aspects of the film and, you know, having lost the people that you lost and just carry that, but still go on through the task of research and all the things. And there was this moment where you were about to walk into an event and you stopped and put this smile on your face. Was that written in there? Was that just, did you add that? How did that moment come to be that smile that you, you know, it's like, you know, a mask that you put on before you walked into that event, your character? Well, I'll say a little bit. I want Ava to pick this up. We were in Germany. And so the 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 scene was um we did the scene and we did a we did part of that scene in Germany and part of it in the, in Savannah. Mm. So um uh can I say we were doing this without permits? Can I say that? What are they gonna do now? Come I mean, you know, <laughs> so they can't find me. They don't know where I am. Right. That's right. <laughs> so we so Ava and I'll let her talk, I'll let her talk about this. We were just going around Germany, Berlin with the camera and just picking up things. And she was kind of talking me through things, talking me through, you know, what I would be feeling in this in this moment. Um, and that kind of happened. Do you want to talk about that, Ava? Sure, no, it was this wonderful moment. We were in Berlin and just in thinking about the scenes, the way I, I direct is I'm editing, editing in my head. So as I'm shooting things, a certain angle I'm thinking about what it cuts with in my head and so i had been thinking I needed something in between these two pieces and I didn't quite have it. Anjanu was very lovely to jump in the car with us one day in the sprinter van and head out into into Germany just looking for some stuff that I needed just some connective tissue and um, so we put the dress on her and she walked out and she's looking at me like what are we doing and and I said there's this little piece that I want we shot the inside of this um this gala that you that you look beautiful going into mm -hmm. but what about right before you stepped in um when you went the first time to this gala your life was one way the next time you went to your, the gala your life had completely changed what, what would it feel like walking in let's see it and one take that's what you what that's what your sorrow does sorrow does she's just gonna smash it in one take and then i just say cut and then i say okay let's go to the next um because she um she just embodies the character and can pick that up at any time because she's carrying the character with her um you know with such a with such a, a beautiful embrace of what she's called to do so I love that that moment in the film. And I also love telling the story of how we kind of got it on a whim. Yeah, one take wonder. I love that. I love hearing those stories about, you know, how you all were in India, you were in Germany. I mean, considering Germany and how they really um, tried to not uh, celebrate in any way uh, the, their Nazi past, right? They really focus on the victims, very different from how we do things here in the U.S., uh, very, very different. I wonder if there were some things that you all wanted to do in, in the film that they said no to. Um, you know, may, maybe it was, you know, showing swastikas or something of that. I mean, was there something that they were, I mean, aside from the things that you didn't ask for permission for, I mean, were there some things that you wanted to do that you weren't able to do in um, Germany or in India? No, uh, we are a small black woman owned <laughs> black people led production company. My producing partner is from Chicago. I'm from Compton. We went into Berlin. We asked for what we wanted in a way that had a very firm plan in place from logistics to safety to a knowledge of the local laws and policies and presented our production plan and it was approved. So yeah. we uh, we shot uh, the book burning in a in the real place where the events happened. There had never been um, a shoot in that space uh, for those events. We flew the swastika, which is, which is illegal in the city. Um, we had a thousand German um, young people dressed up as Nazi soldiers. Soldiers. We had to teach them how to heil, teach them how to march. 
Um, we did a lot of things that aren't usually done, but I think our track record in terms of the kinds of films we make, um, our, um, you know, I think expertise as producers, seven years of Queen Sugar helped out in Germany, y'all. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, all of our uh, attention to detail and the respect for the subject matter um, made it so that uh, we were we were taken seriously and granted the permissions to do what we needed to do, both in Berlin and in Delhi. Yeah. I, I want to talk about some of the other um, actors that in the beautiful performances that showed up for this. Um, Niecy Nash and her wigs. Loved her. Uh, These wigs. <laughs> I couldn't talk her out of the chair. <laughs> they worked. I'm glad she's not here because we'd be fighting about the wigs. But they we worked. <laughs> She yes, yeah, she she had her pick of wigs, whether I agree with them or not. But yeah. <laughs> Audra McDonald, Blair Underwood, Nick Offerman, Vera Farmiga. Um, there there's so many. Donna Mills come through Knott's Land, and I was so happy to see her. Um <laughs> I was like, yes, Abby. Um, it you know, <laughs> it was great uh, these performances. And I wanna I, I wanna ask Anjanu about it, but Ava, I want to start with you about you know getting people to be a part of this. I know, you know, your reputation speaks for itself. People want to work with you. But Nisi, for example, was working on something in LA. People moved schedules around. Um, how wonderful was it to have these actors to come and be a part of this with you all? Really wonderful because this wasn't a payday. You know, nobody yeah. was getting paid a ton of money. This was a passion project. And so, yeah, Nisi had probably the most strenuous schedule. She was actively shooting her show, Rookie Fed. She was number one on call sheet, which is means nothing can happen if you're not around or available. And she went to her producers and, and, you know, changed things around so that she could fly to Savannah every Thursday for like four weeks to be Marion, which is a very different change of character. And she would get there, she would land and she would go straight into working with us, finish, fly back, have one day of rest and go back on the set. So that's something that, you know, was not usually done. It was done with such an open heart. She's such an incredible human being. Um, you know, someone like Audra McDonald, that was one day, you know? I mean, she came in, she rehearsed with Anjanou for a day. Second day, she was in her fitting. And uh, the third day we were shooting and then she was on her way home. Nick Offerman had just came from his um, miniseries, The Last of Us, which he just won the Emmy for. And um, and so he he said, who am I playing again? I was like, you're a plumber with the MAGA hat. He's like, wait, wait, what am I doing? I said, just put this on. It's going to be fun. <laughs> and uh, so people were very in one of my that's one of my favorite days. Nick Offerman and Anjanou down there in this real basement flooded with water. And just the two of them having never met. But you just have such mm, giving actors that they just to start to play and, and be, in, be in this bit of a dance. And I remember at the end of the scene, they hugged each other. And I just, um, I, I really loved that that day. Um, and yeah, so I think all of our cast, you know, really was a function of it being an independent film because I was able to cast all the people that I really loved and wanted in the part and didn't have to jump through the hoops of, of studio approvals and all of that. Uh, John Bernthal, someone who I didn't know, who beautifully plays uh, Brett, um, Isabel's husband, um, you know, it was just, it was just, uh, it, it's, it's, it's one of the casts that I'm most proud of, of everything that I've done. Wow. Uh, Anjanou, Nisi said that once she, you know, knew she landed this role that she wanted to connect with you a way, in a, in a way before you all were actually on the set. So you all felt like cousins. John too said something about wanting to be there for you, you know, as this lead in this movie. What was it like for you, you know, with Nick Offerman and all the different interactions that you had with these actors, given the process and how quickly things had to go? I mean, I know you're a pro, but I wonder if it was, um, you know, anything in particular challenging for you or just extra special with interacting with these people in this way, these fellow actors. I would say it was extra special. Um, I, the, the day that I ha had with Audra McDonald, mm. one of the most fun days that I've had shooting anything. We just had a, we just talked and talked and talked. And then we, Ava said action. And then we talked and talked yeah. and then Ava said action. Um, John Bernthal is one of the loveliest human beings I've, I've known. 
Um, and he came to this job really to be, I, I, you know, we talk about allies. John Bernthal is an ally. That's mm. how I, I receive him. And he took this job, you know, to be, to be um, uh, a support system on and off camera. And that's what he did. Um, you know, working with Nick Offerman, it was brief, but he was lovely. He's a, he's, excuse my language, an asshole on camera, but off camera, he's totally lovely. Niecy Nash, you know, I just feel like she's just one of these actors where she doesn't open her mouth unless she believes what she's saying, believes what she's experiencing. And so working with her was just felt like I was sitting down chatting with my cousin for real. Mm. Um, so I, I would say extra special. That was my experience. I didn't feel a challenge. I felt a joy. It was a joy. And I, the good thing about this is I don't have to lie. I don't lie. I just don't <laughs> say anything. But um, I can, I can openly say that it was a joy. I love hearing that. Yeah. That moment with Nick Offerman, I was just like, when I saw that hat, I was just like in the audience, like, I, it took Isabel, as I said, because how she, in, you know, spoke to him and encouraged him to see her humanity and that connection that they made in that moment was so beautiful. And I had to check myself and say, you know, I, I could not, I don't think I could have done that, but maybe moving forward, I could try. Um, you know what I mean? But that's just me. I thought it was so, so many beautiful moments. Um, in the interactions. But I also wanted to ask Ava about the non-actors um, that showed up. Um, and, and not to call him a non-actor, correct me if I'm wrong, but the gentleman who told the story about the swimming pool, he was an extra. Um, the two uh, workers, the Dalit work, is it Dalit workers in India were, that's what they really did for a living. Um, um, the professor that was Isabel's tour guide, he was, he played himself. Um, how did that all come? Did that all, was that planned or did that all just unfold as you all were making this film? Well, I, I, I'm going to answer you. I just want to say, I yeah. am astounded. There's, I can't see comments. I wish I could. They, I can't it's, either. It's, it's structured like a Q and A. So I'm so sorry if you're talking to me and I can't talk back. I can't see you in the questions. And I see some people who know they can comment in a question. Um, I, I well, just we are doing questions there's... after this, just to mention really quickly. Sorry to interrupt you, Ava, but go on. Uh, I was gonna say that there's one, a, 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 um, a thousand five hundred people in here. Yeah, and I'm told another thousand on Facebook, and I just think that's wild and wonderful. And I just yeah. want to thank you all for being here to talk to me and Anjanou about origin. Um, and just to say, before y'all leave, it's in theaters now. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to try to answer these questions so that I don't spoil it. And if you have seen it, I'm going to try to answer it. So I give you a little bit. So I'm trying to kind of walk a line, Jackie, with what you're asking. Okay. But yes, generally, I like to incorporate um, all kinds of people in the process. Everything is, is for the most part, planned. Um, you know, this is a real production. We're not there improving. Um, you know, I have real deal, you know, incredible actors like Anjanou Ellis Taylor on set. So everything has to be well thought out beforehand, but I prepare so that I can leave myself open to the possibilities. I'm so prepared that I'm not nervous about anything happening. I'm not closed down because I'm trying to control it. Mm -hmm. I'm prepared enough to be able to be open and to let things go and to let things in. And so in being that prepared, it allows me to, that's how I stay free is I stay ready, right? And so, if something comes to me or an idea comes, I feel like I know enough in my head about how much time we have, what we can do, what we can't do, that I can make decisions about how to let things in. So for example, in the scene that you'll see towards the end of the film, there's a big incident around the pool with a young boy. There is a man who is narrating that story. That man was not an actor who went through an audition process. That was an actor that we call a background actor that some people call extras who was not prepared to do that part that day, but was ready when his opportunity came, 
was prepared and was able to step up and knock it out of the park. Suraj Yenge, Dr. Suraj Yenge, is a young Dalit Indian uh, academic uh, who plays himself. Um, he's such a spectacular, charismatic guy. Yeah. I was starting to look for someone in auditions and I was like, who am I gonna get to play this? Six foot, <laughs> skinny with a big, gorgeous Afro, charismatic, fun. I mean, he and Andrew were bosom buddies. He's just so fun and vivacious and full of life and yet drops knowledge like this with his PhD and his connection between black people and Dulla people. Like it's just not possible to find that guy in audition process. So I, we enticed him to play himself. So now you have him untrained, but playing himself with a very, you know, you know, lauded actress with, with ingenue. And it, it creates something interesting with those two people together. So sometimes you put people together of different experience levels and, you know, magic comes. And so those are a couple of examples when that happened. I love that. It it, it definitely made for um, something even more special um, with this. You mentioned uh, for folks who are here, if, if you can give us a thumbs up, if you've seen the film, let us know if you've seen it. Um, I kind of want to encourage people to get to the theater um, before we run out of time. A lot of great thumbs Look at up. All those there. thumbs. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> and if That's you've awesome. seen it, I have to say, you have to see, I, I have to go see it at least one more, maybe two more times. Um, and keep the thumbs coming, you guys. These ladies need to need to see that love. I know they appreciate it. Um, it's important to get out there and see this in the theater. Um, and to tell your friends, take your friends. When I went to see it, um, I took my mother and we were in a theater with about, I mean, it was a lot of people in there. And my mother was asking, are we in the right theater? And I was like, I think so. We were watching previews um, and in walks about 10 to 12 black women all coming in to watch the movie together. And, you know, they had their popcorn and everything. And it was, you know, it was a beautiful experience all together that we had. I had the screener and I could, you know, I, Jackie was Jackieing, So I missed the deadline and watched the screener. So I was like, you know what, instead of asking for another screener, let me go to the theater. I'm so glad that I had that experience in the theater. If I had watched the screener, I would have started. It's not the same as watching it at home. You have to be in the theater to experience the wonder of this film and what you two ladies, I mean, really congratulations to both of you for this beautiful, transformative film. I mean, it really is a wonder. You all, I mean, I, keep, I can't stop talking about it to people who haven't seen it, encouraging them to go. And to people who have seen it, we're having all these conversations because you can't just see it you have to talk about it, right? Um, and so I encourage everybody, you know, and, and I wanna ask you both about this, not just with this film, but with films that tell our stories and are made by us, how do we do a better job of supporting that in this thing called Hollywood? Like how do, what do we need? What do you wish that we knew? Like when, what are the days that we should go when films open? Like what's the secret sauce to add to the success? Yes. Well, okay. I'll tell you some secrets. Yeah, please. Um, the first weekend and the second weekend are really important. Um, and it is, it, it is less Sunday. It's more Friday and Saturday. So on Sunday morning, they call the weekend. It's like a boxing fight, right? Mm -hmm. They count up the points and see how it's going to go because Friday has a certain percentage. Saturday has another percentage and you can figure out Sunday from Friday and Saturday. So while it's wonderful to go after church and we want you to go after church, if you go on Saturday before you go grocery shopping or something, it's better. Or Friday night or Friday matinee in the morning or whatever you can do. Certainly Sunday's wonderful um, and appreciated. But if you're asking for tips on what really helps filmmakers, yeah. if you can get there on Friday and Saturday. It's very, very helpful. During the week is also great. I like during the week because that's when we do a lot of our educational work. The head of our education at Array, Tammy Garns, um, orchestrates a lot of 
uh, trips for children um, through our seat16.com program. This is where you can buy a ticket for a young person for 16 bucks. They get a seat to the movie and they get a one year subscription to masterclass. That's seat16, S-E-A-T, at 16.com. And so we do a lot of that work during the week. Um, but yeah, Friday night, Saturday all day, those are the golden times. Okay. I love that. What about what, how do you ensure that a movie as, as moviegoers, how do we help make sure a movie stays in the theaters for an extended time? Is it going during those times? No, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's groups of people, you know, really bringing in groups, really trying to, you know, with our film, we are with a very small distributor who's struggling to connect to certain audiences certain, and, and, and black folk being one of them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's not, there, there's not a lot of money being spent every week on advertising. So this film is not gonna come up to you and tap you on the shoulder. Like you're not gonna be sitting at the car and a bus goes by with origin on it, you know? Or you're not gonna look up and see a banner or a billboard, or you're not gonna be on Instagram and a bunch of ads pop up and tell you the closest show time to you. Some of the things that the bigger films can do, this film um, uh, hasn't been distributed in that way. But one of the things that we have is each other. And, and spaces like this. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just about continuing to get the word out, bringing small groups. If everyone on this call got 10 people to go, everyone on this Zoom got 10 people to go, that would keep us in theaters for another couple of weeks. So wow. it's just kind of each, each one teach one, you know, passing it along. And we're really just trusting that all these hearts and thumbs ups, um, you know, bring in another person. That really, yeah. that really helps quite a bit. 10 people. I accept that challenge. I like wow. that. I like that. Um, Anjanu, um, out handing out flyers. I saw a video of you like handing out flyers for this, getting people out there. I love that. So passionate about this film. Any secrets from you? Um, not just with this film, but just in general with supporting um, Black creatives in film and TV. You know, honestly, I'm just going to be transparent. I did that because I believe in this movie. Yeah. You know, I I, I have other things that are going to come out. You know, you probably are not going to see me in the street passing out flyers for those films. <laughs> you know, it's not, not that I don't, you know, appreciate the work, but it's just different. You know, yeah. I believe that um, I believe that I'm a part of something that is bigger than me. And I believe that when Ms. Wilkerson wrote this book, she she did it because she was radicalizing our language. You know, she was introducing a new way for us to practice humanity. And I believe that when I, I read it, I believe that Ava took the baton in, you know, the cinematic iteration of that. Um, and I'm a part of that. Um, you know, we we are you know, it, we say in church, if there ever, if there ever was a time that we needed the Lord, you know, like we say those kinds of things, but we do need some sort of intervention in this moment that we are in. And I feel that this, this film is that kind of intervention. Um, so that's why I was out in them streets, uh, you know, passing out flowers and doing whatever I can. I'm calling people, everybody I know I called on Friday. I know my friends and family are tired of me. <laughs> I don't care. Um, yeah, I believe in this film. I believe that, that I believe in what it could do. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I thought it was a beautiful thing to see that. I've never seen you do that before in the many roles that you played. So I knew it was something special that you did. And it was because you're so passionate about this film. But I thought it was a beautiful thing um, that you, you know, that you did that. I thought it was, I thought it was just lovely. Um, before, well, we're going to take Q&A, you guys, from all the people that are here who are accepting the challenge to take 10 people uh, right, to the theater. Um, Can I tell you this one, uh, Jackie, this one yeah. I'm reading from Stephanie Hawkins Anderson. Listen. I purchased the whole row at the theater because I did not want to risk sitting next to someone who might not be able to handle my rage, my emotion, my blackness. It was amazing to sit silently when the film was over as we each tried to process what we just watched and then walk out processing it out loud. Really That's what happened. Yeah. When I was in the theater, we all sat there 
just, you know what I mean? There were sniffles, but everybody sat there. No one was in a rush to get anywhere. Everybody was processing. Um, and I guess one last question before we go to the Q&A, and Cynthia Bell is going to come and, and read some questions for us from uh, the audience. Um, I know, Ava, for you, that there was an opportunity to have this film made, um, I think, by Netflix or someone, but they wanted to do it later this year, 2024. And it was important for you to get this film out uh, sooner than that. Why is that? What 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 do you all hope to take away, both of you, Ava and Anjanu, what the takeaway is from this film, from audiences? Um, you want to go first? No, I want you to go first. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't really, I, I, I prefer not to say what I, the takeaway is for me because okay. everyone comes to films with their own set of experiences, their own awareness their own spirituality, their own memories, their own losses, their own triumphs. And we've experienced people from all walks of life processing it, the film in different ways. So I don't want to dictate and say what I want it to be. I think the main yeah. thing is I want you to take something from it. I don't want it to be disposable entertainment where you watch it and then you forget about it. And from what mm. I've heard, people are really taking this as soul food. It sticks to their ribs. They're full. And whatever it is that you're taking, just take something. And you can only do that if you go in with an open heart. And so the hope is that that is happening, that exchange is happening. And, um, and I, you know, I'm always delighted to hear what people find and take from it. Okay, Anjanu, I, I, I guess maybe what, they, what you want people to take away, what do you hope, um, I guess takeaway is not the right thing, but I, I feel like this film is something that's going to stay with people um, and that there are going to be conversations beyond, you know, this film, beyond watching. I think people are going to continue to talk about this. It's going to live on for a long time. Um, maybe it'll be used in schools, um, you know, to, to teach. I know a lot of young people are going to see this film in high schools in Detroit. I know there was an effort to get some young people um, in the 10th, 11th, and 12th grades to go and see this. So Anjanu, what do you hope the life of this project, maybe that's a better question, will be beyond this moment? Beyond this moment. Um, yeah, I, I longevity. Longevity. Yeah. Um, I love the term that... Um, Ava used, you don't want it to be disposable entertainment. You know, you, you want, you want, I, creatively, I want longevity. So yeah, there's a creative part of it. I want it to be, I want it to be, you know, looked at in, um, in, 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 I want it to have longevity in terms of how we look at the work of this black woman who made this film. Um, um, and I want that to live forever because I think it is, I think it is, I think what she has done is remarkable. I think it, it, I think it says something about the extraordinary nature of being a black woman in this moment right now and how we're constantly disrupting practice, right? Practices in this country. And that is one of the things that she's done. And um, I want that to be, I want that to live forever as they said in the sing in the word in the song thing. So there's that part. But I also want this. I want this movie to, I've said, I said this earlier. This for me, this is a dangerous film. It's dangerous. The book was a dangerous book. The reason why I say it was dangerous is because it was banned. The book cast by Isabel Wilkerson was banned by organizations like Moms for Liberty. It was banned. They don't want it. They didn't want it in libraries. It was banned. They're afraid of the ideas in it. I think I, I am excited about it. I'm excited about that idea. I'm excited that, that this could be something that could disrupt what we are doing in this country. Um, and that is what I want for the present moment. That's why I wanted Ava to answer that about why she wanted this to come out in 2024. Can you talk a little bit more about that, Ava? Please. Yes, we're in a state of emergency, you know, uh, in terms of the, it's it's beyond dangerous rhetoric, rhetoric now. This is 
a mobilizing of forces against us. Uh, and it is really important that we listen. Um, I think the, 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 the press uh, is doing a poor job collectively and reporting on the dangers day to day. I don't feel like we, as the American people, are being alerted to what is being said on the campaign trail by Trump, um, who's speaking very clearly about what he plans to do. Yeah. Things like starting a draft or closing borders or, um, um, you know, prosecuting artists or focusing on, gosh, all kinds of ways to limit movements and modes of thought for um people who fit into categories on this call on this on this zoom and it's not top of mind for us in the news so it's underreported and it's um and it's not being understood and heard and so the hope is that this film can at least start to get people in a framework of thinking about wow we're all this is this is connected or there's mm -hmm. some secret arcs of history that we're not hearing a lot about or oh let me pick up that book or oh let me have this conversation or oh let me listen or oh let me turn into turn into the news even though i'm sick of it these kinds of things i think art can contribute to a national mood mm -hmm. and the hope is that this film contributes to a conversation and a natural national mood of leaning in and understanding what's going on it will be too late by summer it'll be too late in september um, to 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 just be tuning in then yeah. um, it's almost too late now so it's incumbent upon us to become fluent and the kind of language that's going to help us defend ourselves organize ourselves and protect ourselves and that's why I really um, did everything we could to make sure the film was out now yeah I, I just want to say this real quick. My one of my friends in who's from Florida was trying to organize a screening at a school, and she she partnered was she was trying to partner with this uh, white author to have this screening in Florida, and the the person who was an administrator at this school said that they could not do that. They were afraid to do that because Ron DeSantis is a, a supporter of the school, a financial supporter of the school. She doesn't even know what the, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That, 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 that this, in, this film is being kept from children because they're afraid. They're afraid of the power of it, you know? So that, that is, that is the moment that we're living in. And it feels to me, it, it, it's, it's so meta. We we had yeah. a film, we had a scene in the film that was about book burning. Yeah. Like, look at what we are experiencing right now. Right, the banning of books. Yeah, I mean, so there's, for me, there's an urgency. There's an urgency to this film and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, I, I don't want us to uh, lose the opportunity to get some questions from our audience. Cynthia, do you have any questions for us? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. We have a plethora of questions. We could actually be here all night. So thank you, everyone, for all of the wonderful questions. The first question is, how hard is it now for indie artists and actresses to cross over into the main sector? And what avenues would you suggest they use to do so? Either of you want to take that, Ava or Ajanu? For both of you? Uh, yeah, I, I would say don't focus on crossing over into the main sector. Focus on doing your best work. The main sector ain't got the best work, right? The main, the main sector is not necessarily where you want to be. And I think so often, you know, we train young people and emerging people to want to be on stages, holding awards, doing all that kind of stuff. You know, we have to remember, you know, Ossie Davis and Ruby D. You know what I mean? We have to remember Glenn mm -hmm. Turman, who I just saw the other night, you know, who, you know, folks who were doing the work and telling the stories of our people without any, not I'm saying promise of reward, it was no possibility that they were going to be rewarded. And yet they did it, you know? And so that should be our focus. And, and I just think the mainstream, the main spotlight, doesn't keep you going when you got to get up at two in the morning for the for the early call you know what i mean 
you got to be getting out in the in the morning in the cold and it's dark outside and um and you got to learn lines when everybody else is at the party the main light doesn't do that your passion for it does and it doesn't matter if you're doing it for 20 people or 2,000 people or 2 million people it's your drive so find that and follow it mm. thank okay. you thank you so much Ajane, this question is for you. What are you doing to decompress from this role that you just played? Talking to y'all. That's what I'm doing. I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> um, yeah, I cannot, I can't, I, I think I can speak a little bit for Ava. We had another call a few days ago. She has a million of them, but um, we had an, I had another call with her a few days ago with the, with the National Council for Negro Women um and for me um as as someone who is operating outside of that main sector at the moment um we have we have been ignored by the main sector um and in in those moments of in those moments of doubt it's easy to to lean into what you're doing is in vain it has no significance so these conversations that I'm having with other black women, ah, mm, mm. seeing you guys going to this film and supporting it the way that you do. That's my, that's my decompression. Um, I feel, I feel healed by this. I feel, I feel seen by it. I feel supported by it. Um, and yeah, this, this is, uh, this is my, this is my, this is my decompression being in communion with other black women at the moment. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for your passion and compassion. Ava, this question is for you. Did you ever have to change something major in one of your scripts to please the network or the producers? Yes. Well, I just want to say, because some people are asking about curriculums, I just wanted to use this. We do have a very extraordinary curriculum that we are fine tuning right now that we've been working on for 16 months. Um, and it, you keep your eye on array 101. That's our company array. Um, for the latest, it's going to drop, I don't know, in the next couple of weeks, but this learning companion is the mother of all learning companions and is going to be incredible for people that are teaching young folk, students but also just you know when you come back from a movie and you're googling and you're wondering what's what it's all in the companion with clips and pop-ups and behind the scenes and trivia and all kinds of things that's really incredible and you can get lost in this learning companion and look up an hour of, has passed um so keep an eye out for that i'm seeing a lot of people ask about it yes when you are working in for a studio or a network they you're taking millions of dollars they have opinions, okay? They're not gonna give you millions of dollars and not have an opinion. I mean, they might give somebody else millions of dollars, but they're not giving me millions of dollars and not have an opinion. And so, yes, they have ideas. And a big part of my job, most people think I'm yelling action and cut, but I'm also a producer. And so I have to negotiate those opinions. And you have to kind of be able to work within what they want and what in what you want. The more you do it, it becomes a little bit easier. You have, you know, hopefully accrued some respect from them, but that's not going to stop them from still saying we think this is better. And so I don't necessarily do it, but I had a, I have a set of tools to handle it. Like I say things like, you know what, I'll take a look at that. And I'd be like, this. it makes them think I'm very serious and I'm going to do it. Or I'll say, you know what, good idea but I won't quite do the idea. Things like this, you start to kind of get a sense of how to work around it. And then you keep your ears open because now and then you're gonna hear something that's good. Now and then. But usually you're having a kind of on an obstacle course of your own ideas and then stuff that's getting thrown at you. Other people's crazy ideas, things that people think won't work that you know will work money coming and going, locations falling out, all kinds of things happen. It's like a crazy dance that we do. 
but it's addictive and, and I love it. On this movie, we did not have that because we were completely independent. So everything you see in the film is exactly what we wanted to do. It's crazy. Every decision, every location, every word, every scene, every piece of music, everything was to our heart's content. It was, it was an experience unlike any I've ever had. I think that's why this film, for so many reasons, uh, has a very special place in my heart. Okay, and last question for you, Ava. Where did you get the inspiration for the autumn leaves scene that symbolized grief and loss? Yes, that was, you know, when you're writing um, and you have to take the words and put them into a, a visual motif, you know, it, it becomes something where you're drawing from the inspiration of things that other people have done before. Um, you might have an idea that's just sprung from your own imagination. For me, that scene in particular came from personal experience of how I process grief, how it is in my head, how it was in my heart. When I lost someone who I loved, um, you know, I felt like I was in a, a dark void and uh, I felt like, you know, uh, I was just part of, you know, leaves falling from a green tree that were, that had no place to go went on the ground. I just wanted to be covered by them. And these ideas, you know, part of what we do as artists is try to translate how we feel into a visual realm. You know, Ingenue has to take words on a page and bring them to life and make them feel like they're coming from a real person with a real history, a character that we create. You know, it's really this gorgeous, I won't say magic, but I say there's a miracle in, in making films um, and it's an honor to do it. And that particular piece is a very personal uh, part for me. Um, but everything we do has our fingerprints on it. And every single person that works on a movie, whether you're a crew member or an actor or the writer, director, whatever, um, leaves a bit of themselves um, on the film. Thank you. Thank you both so much. And at this time, Jackie, I'm going to turn it right back over to you in case you have anything else that you'd like to wrap up with. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia. Well, I just want to thank everybody out there uh, in the audience for taking the time and joining us for this conversation Please, please, please go and see this film, support this film, support these ladies in this really important work. Um, even if you've seen it, I plan to go and see it at least two more times. I hope that you all do too. Take 10 people. That's the promise yes. that we made. I'm making it on behalf of y'all. All and of us are going to take 10, 10 people. If you want to take 10 people, sis, if I may say, if you have a group, church, work, you know, you just know a, a group of people that want to go, you can email Tammy at ArrayNow.com, right? So that's for groups. If you want to buy out a theater, right? You can, you can, you can, you can email her. And this is something that uh, we we process and we help you through it. We find the location, we tell you how much it is, and we 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 help you process that whole thing. Uh, that's for serious because we have a very small team. So seriously, if you actually like, I want to buy a group this weekend. I want to buy out a theater. Um, then, and buying out a theater is about, you can do it for about 1500 to 2000, right? If you want to just buy a ticket for one other person, a young person, you can go on seat16.com, S-E-A-T-1-6.com and just buy a ticket for a young person for 16 bucks. We've made, raised almost a quarter of a million dollars already. And that's how those kids from Detroit and that's how kids from all over the country are going to see this film for free on the weekdays and in matinees it's from people who leave the movie theaters and then go on to seat 16. And then beyond that, you know, if you haven't seen it, it's playing at theaters around the country. You can go to Fandango, you can go to AMC, uh, or you can go to originfilm.com and find a theater near you. I feel like a car salesman, I'm telling you all the ways you can buy, but we have worked really hard on this film. And mm -hmm. I think that when you watch this, we believe that you're gonna take something from it. You're gonna see incredible performances, um, a performance unlike any I've ever been able to be a, around or witness with my own eyes every day. I'm astounded that I got to watch Anjanu Ellis and be close to her as she portrayed a role that I believe she will be known for for many decades and film lives far beyond us. And this is gonna be one for the ages. And we're only in the first couple of weeks. She don't even know what's coming with this movie. 
And so I just want to thank her for that and invite you to see what she and the rest of the cast have done. And if you've already seen it, thank you. And that's it. That's all I got to say. Can I say something just real quick, real quick? Yeah. Um, I just want to say hello to Tugalu College. If y'all are in the, in the, in the, in the chat or if you're on the, um, anywhere on, under the sound of my voice, uh, it's a particular hello to Gamma Psi chapter uh, from Tugaloo College. And y'all, y'all have showed up and showed out for us, Delta Sigma Theta. And I'm, I'm so grateful to you. I just want to say thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Let me just, uh, Ava, Tammy, T-A-M-M-I, T-A-M. Oh, T-A, thank you, sis. T-A-M-M-Y at oh. Array Now. That's my company, Array, A-R-R-A-Y-N-O-W.com. Tammy uh -huh. at ArrayNow.com. You can hit her. You can say, I'm in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I'm wherever. I want to buy out a theater. What do I do? And her team will, will help you. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies, so much for the conversation. It was really lovely to dig a little bit deeper um, into this film. And I can't say congratulations enough for this powerful work. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie. Bless you. Thank you all. Have a beautiful evening and stay okay. Black, beautiful, brave, and blessed.